Hello, Facebook fans. This is Jeremy Lopez here. I wanted to take a moment, first of all, to address some issues. And the first issue is what happened, what we saw this past weekend within Orlando. You know, many times in life as Christians, we struggle, you know, with convictions. We struggle with right and wrongs. We struggle with so many things within our, within our lives, do we not? We struggle with, Lord, what do we do when a situation happens? And I, to be honest with you, you know, watching one of my friends, Doug Addison, and many other prophetic voices out there, to hear their response to the situation, that horrible uh, killing of 49 innocent lives within this club called The Pulse here in, in Orlando, Florida. Folks, it's tragic. It, 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 it pains me to know that people um, are, are, are dead because of this psycho person who decided to go and take it out on innocent people that had nothing to do with him. And it angers me, and it's this righteous indignation that makes me furious to think that innocent lives can be taken by some wacko uh, doing some crazy thing like that. And you know, this guy might have issues. He could be, yes, he could be a Muslim. He could be this or that. But you know, the issue, folks, is it doesn't matter what this religion of this man was, or does it matter uh, what his motive is because the problem with this is it was done. The problem with this is there are 49 lives lost now that we can never capture. We can never get back again. And as a Christian, I want to tell you today that I take a stand. You know, there's um, um, going around on Facebook, there's this new logo that says, We Are Orlando. And I want to share something with you. Many people say, well, you know, I'm not gay and I'm not this, I'm not that. And so I don't want to put We Are Orlando upon my Facebook. Can I tell you something? As a Christian that takes first top priority in my life over anything and everything in my life, even over yours, you should remember and realize right now, you should be angered right now that innocent people died. And you should be proud and want to be able to post on your Facebook as a Christian, as a son and daughter of God, to know that there are people out there that are human beings who've lost their lives through a tragedy of great pain, who was shot in the head, shot in the body. We're, we're not to be gruesome about it, folks, but there was bloodshed. People fell on the floor. And even this horrible killer even shot them over and over again to make sure they were killed. And as a Christian, that angers me. It goes beyond sexuality. It goes beyond what you feel and what you perceive is right or wrong. Let me tell you something. God didn't ask you right now, well, do I pray for him because I don't believe in, in people being gay? Or I do believe because people are gay. I want to tell you something. If you have that mentality right now, you don't know Jesus in the way that I know the Jesus of the Bible. You don't have a clue of what Christianity is really uh, all about. All you know is religion, and all you know is, is, is equaling out the same thing, folks, the very same thing that Adam dealt with, is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. If your issue is still hung up on, well, now how far do we go with these people praying for them? Let me tell you something. If that's your issue, you're eating from the wrong tree like Adam did. God does not ask you the question right now about eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is not about your hang-ups, folks. It's not about your conviction. It's not about what you feel or, or, or how far do I go. If you're a Christian of God, God says love your neighbor as you love yourself. If your neighbor is gay, if your neighbor is transgender, if your neighbor is Muslim, if your neighbor is a Christian, if your neighbor is a proud atheist, I'm going to tell you something. Here's what you need to do. You need to stick your theology on the back burner, and you need to put Jesus on the front burner. And you should be proud to be to come in the name of the Lord and love your neighbor as you love yourself, and be and stand in the place of love. The Bible says mercy triumphs over judgment. Love covers a multitude of sin. If you think something's sin, then you need to walk in love because love covers that. Put it another way, love trumps that. You know, we're talking about a situation here, folks, where innocent lives were murdered and killed. And you might say, well, Jeremy, I don't want to go too far because I don't want to find myself, you know, well, taking up for gay people. I don't want to find myself taking up. Let, let, let me explain something to you, folks. Jesus let a prostitute wash his feet with a precious, expensive uh, oil, as we call it. And, and that fragrance that was that broke open, the alabaster box that broke open upon Jesus' feet, Jesus didn't turn around and look at his disciples and say, now, now folks, I'm not, I'm not a prostitute. I'm not a prostitute, so I want to get that straight right now. And I, I just, I just want to let you know, all I'm going to do is let this woman clean, clean my feet. That's it. 
Folks, listen to me for a moment. Jesus wasn't hung up on his image, and he wasn't hung up on his pride. He wasn't hung up on how people would perceive him. He didn't really care. What Jesus cared about is loving people and allowing a prostitute, a woman, let me just put it bluntly, a woman who in today's terminology is what we call a whore, who would sleep around with many different men. Who knows? Maybe women. We don't know. But he didn't care. He wasn't into how far is too far, Father God. He was into himself, which was love. Love is an agape, and true agape is an unlimited force that cannot be reckoned with by the world. They can't come against it because they've never seen it. When you begin to arise in agape love, and you begin to love and say, I could care less who you are. For goodness sake, folks, church, wake, and wake up this hour. If you want to see the greatest revival that's ever hit this planet, you better get into Jesus. And Jesus is all about love. God is love. He doesn't have love. He is love. And this is an hour, folks, where God is letting us know there are murders going on in schools. There are murders going on in clubs. Now, many of you might say, well, now, Jeremy, wasn't a club and we don't know what was going on. You know, there could be promiscuity. There could be, let me tell you something. Let me, let me explain something to each and every one of you right now. I don't care what was going on in the club. I don't care if people are singing around, walking around, taking a drink and taking and sipping their martini and singing just as I am. I don't really care if they were going around kissing one another. I don't care if they were having sex in the bathroom. That's right, I said it. Because you know what? None of this matters. These are human beings. These are lives that our God loves. God so loved the world. And folks, let me put it to you bluntly. God never said He loved the church first. He loves the world, which means God still today loves the world. And when us, when we as Christians begin to, to stand up and move into the agape of God, which is the unlimitedness of God, then and only then will you see revival. So let me just put it to you this way, folks. If you want to see revival, you better move in agape. You better not question who you need to love. You better love regardless. You should be the first ones doing the vigils in your city for, for what's going on, for what happened in Orlando. You should be there. You might say, well, you know, Jeremy, I'm not gay. I don't wanna I, I don't wanna be in a crowd full of people who were you know, well, there might be a lot of gay people there. You know what? There might be a lot of gay people there. And guess what, folks? You might just learn something. You might just learn something about a culture of people you know nothing about. I know I have. I've learned about people. I've learned about black people, folks. And guess what, folks? If you're black, if you haven't noticed, I'm white. So guess what? I've learned from black folk. You, as a black person, have learned from me as a white person. I've learned from gay people. I've learned from straight people. I've learned from uh, whatever you want to call Asians. I've learned from people all over the world. It doesn't matter, folks. People are people who deserve the right to be loved and they deserve the right to be respected. You might say, are you into equality? I'm into equality of great love, and that is loving people where they are in their lives because God is the one who, can, who convicts people. God is the one. And, and see, let me just put it to you bluntly. You might say, oh, Father God, this might be your prayer. Oh, God in heaven, please just let this be something that you convict these people that were gay. Oh, God, you know, let, let, let me tell you something, folks. Let me tell you something. The true way to pray is, Father God, help the families right now for the victims of those who've lost their children, who've lost their parents, who've lost an uncle, who've lost an aunt. That, my friend, should be your prayer. Let Leave the conviction to the Holy Spirit. You're not the Holy Spirit. So do me a favor. Don't try to blaspheme the Holy Spirit by making, twisting God's arm on who He needs to convict and not convict. Hello. Can I get an amen on that one? Can I get a like on that one? Folks, when we stop playing the Holy Spirit and allow God to be God and allow God to convict what He needs to convict within not them, but me and you. Judgment begins in the house of the Almighty God. It's not about your church where judgment needs to begin. It's in this house. Know you not that you are the temple of the living God. When you begin to understand there's a plank in your own eye you need to deal with, and let bygones be bygones. Let gay people be gay people. Let straight people be straight people. Let black folk be black folk. Let white people be white folk. Come on, folks. I'm being real with you. Who cares about everybody else? You are called to show God's ultimate love, and you should demonstrate and be the example of a God who loves. You know why we have atheists on the planet? Because of hypocrites like ourselves. Because of people who refuse to love their neighbors, who decide to become the Holy Spirit to convict everyone else. Folks, 
Be careful, you're borderline, on, on the, uh, you're borderline blasphemous. When you, when you have to pray, God convicts somebody. Let me tell you something, folks. You think God's going to listen to your prayer to say, oh, thank you for reminding me, I need to convict this person. You really think you're going to do that with God? Nope, you're not. What you're going to do is you're going to say, no, 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 you're praying wrong. You need to pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You need to pray, Father God, like the Lord's Prayer, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You need to start praying that, praising God for those who did survive. You need to start praising God for, for the lives around you that you were a friend to, that you were loved to. Don't pray, God, convict these people. How dare you? How dare you and me ask God, convict somebody, as if God needs to be told to convict a human heart? Folks, quit being the Holy Spirit. Quit being the Holy Spirit. You want to see true revival in this world? Then you need to be God. You need to be love. Let the Holy Spirit convict who He needs to convict. And if someone's not being convicted, maybe God doesn't want to convict that person at that moment. Or maybe never. Hello. That's right, I said it. Maybe we need to be concerned with the own plank on our own eye and say, Father, convict me of the sin in my own life. I'll never be any good to anyone until you decide to convict me. You know, we can sit here and talk about, Lord, convict these people, convict those people, convict this, convict that. And yet, can I be honest with many of you, not, con not condemning you, how many of you out there are divorced when we know in the New Testament what it says about divorce? Hello? How many of you out there have ever lusted? I know of preachers who've confessed to me, man, she's a hottie, is she not? Um, I think Jesus said that if you've done it in your heart, you've pretty much done the act of it if you've done it in your heart. You've already sinned. How many of you out there has ever said a bad word? Maybe many of you have said... You know, of course, this is a place, if you want to call it hell, how many of you said, oh, hell? How many of you ever, ever used the other words? Maybe when you stumped your toe. Come on, folks. Don't sit there and play all holy with me. Because we've all been there, done that, all right? Come on. Now, we've got to learn to come to the place, folks, where we look at our own sin our own life and worry about that. Be concerned about that. My greatest concern is doing what Jesus told me to do. That is, love God, love others, and disciple people. One of, my, one of my close friends the other day, Jason Daggett. If you're listening, Jason, I want to shout out to you the other day. Saw my best buddy in, in, in uh, Best Buy the other day. And when I did, he said, you know, Jeremy, there's three things my father told me to do. He said, love God, love people, make disciples. Love God, love people, make disciples. Folks, you want to see true revival? Do the three things Jesus asked you to do. Love God, love others, make disciples. I promise you we'll see this world turned around for God's glory. So to all those families right now that are struggling, that are hurting from this horrible, devastating massacre that took place in Orlando, I want you to know from this, my heart and this ministry, my prayers are with you. My love is there with you, and I'm going to be the Christian that you need to see, and that is I'll do whatever it takes to be there. I'll, we'll, we will donate money. We'll do whatever it takes. We'll be there. We'll hug on you. We'll love on you, and that's what it takes to be a Christian. That's what it means to be a Christian. For all those who've heard these horrible, horrible soothsayers and these people that consider themselves prophets of God that are trying to act like an Old Testament prophet, not a New Testament prophet, and for those who are weighing the scales and saying maybe this was God's judgment or maybe this or that, let me just tell you right now, if you've heard those kind of people, I want to tell you right now, I do not associate with those type of people. They are not my brothers and sisters in Christ. They do not represent Identity Network, nor do they represent represent my heart, nor do they represent the God who loved the world, who died on the cross to save us all, and who loves us with an everlasting love, who says, my mercy endures forever, not my judgment, who says that mercy triumphs over judgment, who took the judgment and the, and, 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 and the wrath and all the hatred and poured upon His Son on the cross, and therefore that was eliminated by the Son of God. So let me just tell you right now, they do not represent the Christ that I know. They do not stand with the Jesus that I serve, and they're not part of the Christianity that I'm a part of. I'm a part of that of the Bible, which is the love story of God, who brought His Son to love me and told me, you love your Father with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, Jeremy, and you love others as you love yourself.
For those people who don't love other people, who feel as if they have to condemn them and don't love them, the Bible says to love others as you love yourself. All they're doing, folks, is proving to you they don't love themselves. And if you don't love yourself, you can never truly love your neighbor. So just remember this today. Instead of getting angry about those people on Facebook saying these things, you just remember, let them say it because they're proving to you they don't even love themselves. So let their hatred and, and, and let it spew out of their mouth and you just feel bad for them because they're just proving to you and to themselves they don't love them. If they don't love themselves, folks, how can they love everyone else a different around them? So know today, folks, for those people, I'm saying today as a Christian, I'm so sorry. You have to put up with all that garbage and junk you've witnessed on Facebook. For those of you today in our Facebook Identity Network world, as our subscribers, as our partners of the ministry, I would ask you from the bottom of my heart today, partner with us. No, stand with us. Like this, please. I beg you, like this video as much as you can. Comment on the video. Share the video. Please share it with all your friends. Let's let the gospel, this message of Jesus, get out. You don't know. You could share this message with your friends. You could share it with someone else. You could share it with someone else who might be that person to say, I cannot stomach Christianity. I can't stand Christians for what they've said. And all it took was just one person who said, that was God's judgment. Or, or well, we pray for those horrible, rotten people. You could bring this video to the place of them that could save their life that can bring forth a restoration to let them know God truly does love them where they are in their life. Stand with me, please. Partner with me today. Let's make a difference in this world for God's amazing kingdom. Once again, I'm Jeremy Lopez of Identity Network. Thank you so much for this message. And like they say in the presidential candidates and candidations, I approve this message because I will stand with you, Orlando, and I will stand with those who are hurting. So today, know that we love you. We bless you in Jesus' name.